Player characters in an RPG can be tricky. A player character is an imaginary person who you're meant to speak for and control, but the character is meant to be distinct from you in reality, and you're also supposed to be mindful of fellow gamers at your table, like in reality, like actual people around the table, but of course your fictional character doesn't know that these people exist, or, or even that you exist. Your player character thinks they're a real person. Problems can arise pretty quickly whether you realize suddenly that you, yourself, would never rush in to face a dragon in real life, or that your character has every motive to fight the character being played by your real-life friend sitting right next to you at the table. How do you balance conflicts of motives and interests between who you are in reality and who you think your character is in the game, and what makes sense for a fun game. Here are five things I try to keep in mind when playing a character in an RPG, which I do sometimes. Honestly, I'm, I'm not just a game master. One, tendencies, not goals. As much as you try to make it your own, a character in an RPG tends to have predefined goals. In a D&D or Tales of the Valiant or Pathfinder whatever fantasy game, the goal is often to vanquish an evil monster and probably earn money. In an investigative game like Call of Cthulhu or something similar to that, Shadowrun even, the goal is to solve a mystery. In a sci-fi game, the goal might be to thwart an invasion or take down a mega evil corporation and earn some credit it, and so on. You can provide context for these goals, like, I want to vanquish the evil orc horde because they slaughtered my village, and also I need money so I can start a new life. But in the end, the game is still a race to a pretty specific goal, and you can't really necessarily control the game's goal. That's often set up by the, the, the module that you're playing or the game master in charge of the world. Not always, but, but often. Instead of thinking about your character's goals, try focusing on your character's tendencies. What does your character do by default when a certain challenge arises? Does your character back away from a threat to study it before attacking, or does your character character charge in without hesitation? Does your character prefer to talk things out, or to just try things until something works? Does your character view their friends as family, business colleagues, or just partners of circumstance? Does your character value well, knowledge, or community? Does your character prefer words or numbers? Does your character prefer savory or sweet or both? Does your character expect kindness or cruelty, and so on. Pick three tendencies and write them down on your character sheet. When your character is faced with an unexpected situation, and you're not sure how to play it, consider those tendencies. Now, they might not always be directly related. I mean, anything can happen in an RPG, and your character's preference between savory and sweet probably doesn't affect all that much that happens. However, you can extrapolate and interpret and kind of apply those tendencies to different situations and different emotions and different compulsions. It doesn't have to make logical sense as long as it makes sense in your own head in that moment. For instance, if you're faced with a situation where your character has to choose whether to turn a thief they've just caught into the authorities or to take mercy, you might look at a tendency. Your character prefers savory over sweets, so that suggests saltiness so they'll turn the thief in. Or maybe your character prefers sweets to savory. That's rather pleasant. People like sweet foods. So today, your character is going to take mercy on that thief and not turn the thief in. It doesn't have to be a universal truth. There's actually no bearing on whether you prefer salty or sweet food, on whether you take mercy on a thief or not. There's a lot of circumstantial stuff that would go into that decision, but for the purpose of a fictional game, that works as well as anything else. Two, flexible motivation. This one's short and sweet, or savory if you prefer. You can justify anything to serve your character's actions. You really can. When faced with a choice, justify the thing that's fun for the group. 3. Allow for the exception. Sometimes, despite tendencies and motivations, a character doesn't do what they're, quote, supposed to do. 
you don't have to let the way your character usually acts define every single action during a game. Sometimes a character who prefers stealth is compelled either by inspiration from another party member or just the spur of an impassioned moment to charge ahead. Sometimes a character who denies payment decides an item is worth pocketing this time. Nobody is consistent a hundred percent of the time. There's a difference though between uncharacteristic and out of character. Uncharacteristic is an act a character does without thinking about it. Impulsive. Reactive. Out of character is a change in character that suggests forethought and planning or an uncharacteristic action carried out several times. Here's an example. A human paladin in my expedition to Ravenloft game started consuming human flesh. The first time she did it, it was uncharacteristic because there was plausible deniability. The pie with a human baked into it had been given to her by somebody they suspected to be a hag, but at the time nothing had been proven. As the game progressed though, the paladin kept at it. It was frankly out of character, so we shifted, I talked to the player, and we shifted the paladin's alignment and race. It was a major character shift from human to hexblood and from paladin to sorcerer, and the player loved getting to play a new race and a new class, and the character took on a whole new life. 4. Let the dice decide. In an RPG, sometimes the best thing to do is to just roll for it. When you're not sure what your character would do in an unlikely scenario, you can just flip a coin. It's what I do for NPCs a lot, because most NPCs don't have the backstory that characters do. Sometimes I make it 50-50, you roll uh, 11 or higher on a d20 for yes, or 10 or lower for no. Uh, other times I assign a specific action to a number, like 1 to attack, 2 to run, 3 to parlay on a d3. It's obviously not the most scientific or even the most insightful way to reach a conclusion, but RPGs are stories driven by dice rolls. Sometimes you just have to embrace that. 5. Just walk away. Characters can outgrow a campaign. You may not have known your character's story arc at the beginning of the game, but you might find that by level 10 or so it's been told. You're done. Your character has rescued a town, defeated a vampire, collected tens of thousands of gold coins. Maybe the right thing for that character is, indeed, to retire. Other times the party might shift away from your character. If your character is the only uh, lawful good character, or the equivalent thereof, left in a party that has proven itself chaotic, or your character just flat out doesn't fit in with a party that, that once seemed like a good fit, it's okay to roll up a new character. It's important not to confuse your character with your game or the game's save state. There are no bonus points for playing the same character until the end of a campaign, and it's an analog game, so you can create a new character with no loss of progress. I've never thought that the roleplay in an RPG has any requirement to embody a character the way a method actor does. Even the emotional parts of roleplaying a character can be objective. Look at your character, consider your character's background and tendencies, and play the role to stay true to that character. It's part of the challenge and in the end it's part of the fun thanks for watching